Greg Monroe is a big name. Greg Monroe is somebody who's scored a lot of buckets in the past. He's killed the Celtics a lot in the past. Uh, the, the things that I think he'll bring the most to the Celtics, he's a really good rebounder, first of all. V- very good rebounder. He's probably an underutilized passer. I think his high post passing is something that the Celtics will utilize quite a bit. He can play alongside Al Horford because of Horford's versatility. He can play with bench units and be the, the low post scorer that the Celtics have kind of been missing for a long time. I don't know exactly how many minutes he'll play. I don't know how big a role he'll play. I think the Celtics have gotten really good minutes from Aaron Baines and Daniel Tice. I think both of those guys have been big parts of the Celtics top ranked defense. I think both of those guys have been perfectly solid. So the thing with Monroe will be, is he a good enough rebounder? Is he a good enough passer? Is he a good enough low post scorer to boost the offense enough that his limitations as a defender won't hurt you? Um, So I think that will ultimately depend, will ultimately dictate how many minutes he gets. But the Celtics, you know, they had that the $8.4 million disabled player exception. This was a great use of it. it. It was a solid use. There are very few buyout candidates that are 27 years old, still in their primes, and still capable of impacting a team, and still capable of carrying a team's offense for stretches, which I think is what Monroe will do for the Celtics' second unit at times. So now the Celtics have two guys, one in Marcus Morris, one in – Monroe, who can both get hot, both carry you for, for a certain amount of time off the bench. And so I, I think, I think, I, I, honestly, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how much he moves the needle, but it's definitely an interesting yeah. signing, and he'll definitely win some games for the Celtics. And he's a matchup problem for a lot of teams, especially down low, and the Celtics have seen that the past few years. Yeah, I think the biggest thing that we've seen um, that he'll be able to do, is, like you, you said, the, is the rebounding, besides the rebounding, um, off the bench, like, they just need those guys who can score. You know, that's why Marcus Morris has been such a valuable part, you know, of that second unit is he can just go get you a bucket. And, you know, Greg Monroe can, can do that at times. He can do that in certain situations. And I think it'll be interesting to see, you know, which situations he's most efficient doing that. Um, some kind of interesting stuff there is uh, I, I think the uh, it's worth kind of breaking down the contract situation. Um, saw a lot of speculation on Twitter. Could the Celtics split up the disabled player exception since they didn't get no. to Monroe? And no, they cannot do that. Um, that is That is gone now. Um, like you said, a good use of it, but it, but it's gone. Um, and then I think the other interesting thing um, to talk about with him is that the Celtics are going to. This is pretty much a, a straight rental, you know. Like unless he's unless he's terrible and they decide they want to keep him, they don't have any kind of bird rights. They don't have any kind of that stuff on him. He is just coming in um, for this year to see what he can do for the rest of the season. Um, it's going to be like like you said. I think I, I think one of the interesting things is going to be how they use him defensively, how they try to um, you know prevent him from being a problem. I'm going to be really interested to see how lineups with him and Horford um, kind of match up because Horford can do so many of the, the things that Monroe can't do. You know, he can, he can stretch reliably to the three-point line. And, you know, he's, that being said, uh, Monroe can rebound consistently, and Horford, you know, can't necessarily. He's not always the greatest rebounder. So I think, um, I think just that kind of combination, those two guys working together, um, you know, sort of like playing off each other's strengths and flaws, I, I think that could be really interesting to see. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I- Honestly, Brad Stevens is really good about utilizing guys passing. You've seen it with Horford yeah. last year. He, he set a career high in assists. This year he's on pace to, to shatter that. And the Celtics run a lot of offense through Horford. I think they can use Monroe in similar ways. Dating back to his time at Georgetown, he's always been a really good passer, a really willing passer, yeah. a really talented passer. And I, I honestly, I believe that that's the most underutilized part of his game is how well he passes. Now, low post scoring, even though he's he's a – real low post threat low post scoring is not an efficient way of scoring but the Celtics run a lot of stuff right. to get to get that low post action to force a double to force help and he could he could free up guys for three point shots he he could free up guys on off the cuts similar to the way Horford does when he gets posted up so it, it'll be really interesting to see how they decide to use him whether they turn him into like their their low post passing hub uh, for the second unit, whether they just try to run a lot of offense through him with that second unit. Obviously, they need scoring help. They haven't been a great offensive team all season long. They have lapses. They have droughts. They have times where a guy who you can throw it down to and he can either get you a, a halfway decent shot or he can draw defense and, and find somebody, that's, that's an important thing. So he gives them 
a dimension that they haven't had. And, yeah. and, and really something they probably haven't had throughout Brad Stevens' tenure. I'm, I'm trying to think of another low post player that they've had. I would say Sullinger, Jared Sullinger is probably like the, yeah. the closest, but Monroe is far more, far more of an ox down there, far more of a, a low post scoring threat. And he, he's just huge. And he, he's a, he's a good rebounder. So this, this, this was a solid use of the DPE. Uh, definitely. And, and now it's gone. Now, all those other weird dreams are gone. The Celtics could still go out and trade for somebody. Though. I, I do think yeah. they would still like another perimeter score. I do think they would still like someone who can fill it up from outside, whether it's Tyreek Evans, Lou Williams, whoever else the case may be. I don't think they're going to want to surrender a lot for one of those guys because I do think they very strongly value first-round picks and second-round picks. And I think yeah. with how – expensive their roster is going to be in the future getting cheap talent with with those picks is going to be important to round out the rest of the roster um so i'd be surprised if they spent a lot on a rental but i do think that you'll see them add a a, a perimeter score try to get some more shooting and scoring for that second unit yeah i wanted to ask you about that because one of the things when we talked we've talked about monroe a couple of times now obviously because there were the rumors on, I believe it was Wednesday, and, uh, you know, there's been kind of this little build of a buildup ever since he was bought out. I was curious, you know, what you thought, because you originally, you know, weren't totally sold on his fit, um, and, and it made sense why you wouldn't be, because, again, you know, this is a guy who just doesn't fit a lot of the Celtics sort of, um, he doesn't really fit the Celtics ethos. Like, he's not that kind of versatile, switchy defender, you know, this guy who can play a bunch of different positions. You know, he, he doesn't stretch the floor. Um, I'm curious, you know, what what do you think would be like a good next move, considering that they brought in somebody, you know, like Monroe, who doesn't necessarily fit, you know, what they what they like to do generally. I I, I think the reasons why I didn't think Monroe was a perfect fit are what you just said. Like he doesn't stretch the floor. He's not going to help, you know, the spacing issues when you have both Marcus Smart and Terry Rozier on the court. He's he's not going to help some of those things. Um, but so I, I think. Uh, a a perfect fit would be like a almost like a Kelly Olynyk type, uh, someone yeah. who, who can space the floor and and give those those units room to breathe, and kind of add that that shooting threat for the second unit. I, I think short of that, you know, a, a guy like Lou Williams, a guy like Tyreek Evans, uh, another guy who can score and do it efficiently. You know, Marcus Morris yep. has had. M- Stretches where he carries the Celtics offense. He's not always the most efficient scorer. He can take some yeah. some bad shots. He doesn't get to the free throw line. That's that's another issue that that's really popped up for the Celtics lately. They haven't been getting free throw attempts, and yeah. so I I think someone who can get to the line and and get manufacture those easy points would would help them. They they need more guys to be able to break into the middle of the defense and and do that. So you can either get a stretch guy who can help other guys break through or you can get the guy who's going to break through the defense and help get you those easy points. So I, I, I do think they'll, they'll be looking for perimeter upgrades. I would be, I would be surprised if they make huge changes at the deadline. Um, but I, I do think they'll be in the market for any of the scorers that, that hit the market, whether it's Tyreek, Lou Williams. Um, I'm sure there are a number of other guys that, that I'm yeah. not mentioning right now um, that they'll look at as well. <laughs> Definitely. So one of the other things that I'm curious about with Monroe, I, I'm going to be really interested to see how he matches up with some of the Celtics uh, playoff um, opposition. You know, you, especially when you start looking at maybe a Cleveland or somebody like that and the way that he helps them on the glass, they've been better this year you know, than last year where they just got obliterated by everybody. But Tristan Thompson, obviously he's had a tough season, but that's a guy who just like has often killed the Celtics because he's a great offensive rebounder. And the Celtics just, I mean, he would, he would just be like throwing Al Horford out of the way and, you know, and Horford, you know, he does a pretty good job of getting position. But, you know, Thompson's always just kind of made it not matter that much. Um, and I'll be curious to see how much, you know, if Monroe, you know, obviously they brought in Baines, and Baines has been helpful that way, you know, against some of the bigger guys. Um, Monroe just adds that extra punch of offense as well, which I think will be really interesting. So um, I'm curious to see, like, how he, how Monroe kind of ends up, you know, moving the needle in the second unit. I think that could be a, a great way that he gets on the floor, you know, offensively as well you know, as well as the rebounding, um, but just like matching up with some of these big guys that he, that the Celtics might end up facing. And 
um, you know, especially come the postseason and, and when teams are able to start throwing out guys like Tristan Thompson, who, who can really damage you on the glass. Yeah, and, and Monroe's a guy who, especially if he gets a, a matchup, he can just kill little little guys. The Celtics have seen it for yeah. years. Like, Monroe has always killed them. There, there have been – it seems like countless games over the last few years where Greg Monroe has come in, whether it's first unit, second unit, and just eaten them alive. And so Brad Stevens has seen Greg Monroe just handle smaller guys uh, too many times in the past. And, and so Monroe, especially like in the playoffs, if you get a matchup where somebody's second unit has a, a smaller big man, you can just feed it to Monroe and keep feeding him and keep feeding him. And yep. he's, a, he's a matchup problem. So I, I think in the playoffs especially, having a guy that can be such a matchup problem against certain teams is, is really important. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't think Monroe is an ideal fit because he'll be taking minutes from guys who are good, and, and that's Baines, yeah. and that's Tice, and guys who have given the Celtics solid minutes. Um, but the Celtics, their whole rotation is good. So, I mean, unless, unless they're getting, like, some, some superstar and they weren't going to do that with the DPE – then you're gonna right. you're gonna have somebody who's gonna eat into another solid player's minutes, and it, it, it'll be interesting to see how the defense holds up with Monroe, because obviously defense has carried the Celtics to this point. They're they have the number yeah. one defense. They're able to stop teams. The, their defense gives them has given them a chance against a lot of really good teams. It's allowed them to knock off the Rockets, to knock off the Cavaliers, to knock off the Warriors, and so. I, I'm interested to see how, how their defense sustains with Monroe on the court. And if they can sustain that defense with Monroe on the court, then, then his offense will be a, a huge boost for them in the, in the rebounding too. Absolutely. Um, I, was, uh, I was trying to put together the, like, kind of some of the ways that um, Monroe might like, make the most sense on the Celtics. And I was trying to come up with some of the, like, the better like, like three-man lineups because it's tough to come up with like a five because you know, that shuffles in and out. But um, some of the other guys that, that play, that are going to play along with him well. Um, a couple of the ones that I thought were really interesting to think about were, um, I, I think the combination of him and Jalen and Horford is going to be really interesting. I think those three guys could really, you know, Jalen and Horford, obviously versatile guys who can uh, defend really well. Um, you know, those are guys who can kind of fly around. They can both hit threes. Obviously, Jalen's actually been doing that at a really good level this year. Um, you know, those are both guys who can kind of take advantage of the gravity that uh, Monroe brings into the, you know, into the lane. Um, they can kind of take advantage of that, you know, outside as well. Um, and then I think obviously if you if you flip flop uh, Brown and Tatum, you know, you might not get as much as much defense out of Tatum, but you can still get that floor spacing. You can still get that guy who can attack closeouts and all that as well. Is there any um, any 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 kind of like three man lineups or even like you know bench units or any anything that kind of stands out to you that you're kind of excited to see? I think if if you put shooters around Monroe, give him space to operate, give him threats to pass to, I think that's that's when he'll be at his best. I do think you'll have to be yeah. cognizant of having defenders around him too. You don't want to stick Greg Monroe out there with like a, not that the Celtics really have bad defenders though. So I, yeah. I guess that's not too much of an issue when they play almost all plus defenders. Um, yeah. But yeah. So I, I, I just, just shooters, I guess would, would be the the main thing that Stevens will, will do. I, I am really interested to see how, how they use him in, in, high dribble handoffs and things like that, the, the ways that they've used Horford that I yeah. think will, will really maximize his passing. Uh, 